This is my gigantic new cleat wall. It's 16 feet wide and reaches up to 8 feet high. Stick around and I'll show you how I built it. I'll also be adding a few tool holders to it later. I recently insulated part of the barn to create a new workshop. I spent a couple of months moving things out of the way, insulating the old walls, creating new walls, and adding a couple of doors. Now that it's finally done, I need to try to organize all of this stuff. So the first thing I wanted to do was build a French cleat wall. My workbench will sit right here, right in front of the wall. So I'll want to have all the most important tools that I need right here by the workbench. That should help keep things organized while working in the shop. I currently spend way too much time looking for tools. So having the most commonly used tools and items all organized along this wall will improve my workflow and help to keep the shop tidy. So what is a French cleat wall? Well, most experienced DIYers will know what it is, but many people don't know much about the French cleat system. Well, it's thought that the cleats originated with the French shipbuilders back in the 1800s. How does knowing this help? Well, it doesn't, but I thought it was interesting. Okay, on to the helpful stuff. The French cleat is simply a strip of wood with a 45 degree angle that you attach to the wall. Then you take another strip with that same 45 degree angle and put it on whatever you want to hang on the wall. And you can do that for almost anything. What's so great about this system? Well, it's easily adjustable. You can rearrange anytime. If you don't like where something is, just pick it up and move it. You won't destroy your wall by moving things all the time, drilling new holes and making a big mess, and it actually makes it look better. And you only have to find the studs once. If you're adding new things to your wall all the time, you'll be constantly looking for studs. This way, you only have to find them once when you set it up. Also, you're able to set up cleats in other places in the shop, and then move things around if you need to. I can take things from this wall and move them somewhere else. And you can add a cleat to just about anything you want. And this system is not only for the shop. You could use it in the house, in a pantry or a closet. This is the wall that I'll be adding the cleats to. There's nothing like starting with a clean sheet. The plan is to start at three feet from the bottom and work up. I'm not going any lower than three feet because I think it'll be too difficult to access anything down that low. But before I get started, I'll need to clear some space. the space is clear, I can cut down this 4x8 sheet of plywood. My shop is still quite a mess from the renovation, and I don't have a table saw set up in such a way that I can manage a 4x8 sheet of plywood on my own, so I'm going to have to cut it with a skill saw. I can cut it on my workbench, I just put down a couple pieces of styrofoam, and set the saw depth to just slightly more than the thickness of the wood. This is why I made this workbench so large, so I'd be able to cut large sheets of plywood. After using it for a while, I think the table is a little too large and I'm planning to take it apart and rebuild it. Only slightly smaller. Someday, I want to design a proper workbench, but I'll probably have to wait a while for that. I'm going to cut a bunch of 4 inch strips, and then I'll cut those in half with the table saw blade set to 45 degrees. And I'd love to be able to cut these strips to the full length of the sheet of plywood, but I don't have a saw guide that's 8 feet long. The one I do have is only 4 feet long. So I'm going to cut the plywood sheet in half, and then rip all the strips at four feet long. That's gonna make a little more work when it comes time to put this all on the wall, but oh well. It's time to put some music on and start ripping these strips. this sheet gets a little smaller, it's going to be easier to rip the rest of these strips down to 4 inches on the table saw. There, the 4 by 8 sheet of plywood is now 22 4 inch strips, and a couple that are shy of 4 inches, but I can still use those since they're over 2 inches wide. So now it's time to remove the blade guard and set the saw to 45 degrees. 
and cut all these strips. But first, I'm going to use a piece of scrap to make sure the saw is dialed in to cut these exactly in half. That looks like half. Okay, let's cut these then. There we go, 44 four foot French cleats. But those edges are sharp and splintery. I better sand those, or by the end of this project, I'll need a whole box of band-aids. Now the cleats are ready to go on the wall, or at least they should be but I wanted to make a lot more work for myself. So I'm gonna paint them. It may be a lot more work, but I think it'll look a lot better. The paint I use is a recycled paint and it's by far the cheapest paint in the store. Hopefully it'll look okay. There's only one way to find out. That was a lot of painting. I ended up doing two coats, and I think the paint looks great. I can't wait to see what it looks like on the wall. If you're thinking of installing some French cleats, then I recommend you start your first cleat at the bottom. It's much easier to install the cleat wall if you start at the bottom. I want to get these nice and level, and lucky for me, while I was renovating the shop, I found something I'd forgotten in a drawer long ago. My laser level. This should help ensure the first row is nice and level. And after that, I'll use 4 inch spacers for the rest of the rows. This is why I started at the bottom first. I can't seem to find my stud finder in the clutter of this shop, but lucky for me, I happen to have video footage showing the stud locations for this entire wall. But even with that, I still managed to miss a few studs. That's not a big deal though, because I'm going to cover up all the screw holes anyway, so a few more won't hurt. Okay, all the cleats are on the wall and it's looking good. So now I'm gonna cover all 128 of these screws. I think I have wood filler in here somewhere, but I can't find it. So I'm gonna use this polyfilla. I know it's not its intended purpose, but it should do the job. After I let the polyfilla dry for a bit, I sand it all smooth. Once sanded, I touch it up with some of that recycled paint. There, all sanded and painted. And I even tucked that wire up out of the way. I'm really happy with how this looks. Now, I just need something to hang up there. The drill docking station has been sitting idle since it was built. With all the renovations going on, I had nowhere to put it. Well, now I finally have a home for it. And I can also attach the chargers to the side. That's absolutely amazing to have this finally set up. I also have this cabinet that I made years ago. So I added a cleat to it, and now I have pegboard on a cleat wall. Is that overkill? Maybe, but I love it. I bought this thing. I'm not even sure what to call it. But I got it at a garage sale many years ago. It was filled with random nails and screws. So I thought I would attach a cleat to the back and put it up on the wall as well. But the front of the boards on it were pretty beat up looking. So I added a little of that paint to it and then put it up on the wall. I also added a couple of shelves. These were above the old bench that was in here. The ones I smashed and burned. These shelves are in pretty rough shape as well. 
but I'll use them for now until I can start building some holders for all the tools. I have started to make some holders to attach to the cleat wall. I made this out of a 2x4 to hold some drill bits, and I started to make one for my Forstner bits. I'm making this one out of the wood that I pulled off the walls during the reno, but the Forstner bits I have have metric shanks, so I've ordered some metric drill bits. Stay tuned for that. That's it. The wall's done and I have a few things on there to start organizing the shop. I'm going to spend some time creating some new and interesting holders for other stuff in the shop. So if that sounds like fun, please feel free to subscribe and click the bell icon so you won't miss out on new videos. And if you like this video, please leave a like and maybe even a comment down below. YouTube loves it when you comment, so be nice to the algorithm. Thanks so much for watching.